Hey, let's talk about manuscript rejections and how to deal with them. So first of all, when your manuscript gets rejected, and I'll talk about the different kinds of rejections in just a second, you should realize it's not you that's being rejected, but it's just that paper. And even though it hurts, I think it's important to always remember that point. Also, everybody's papers are rejected all the time. I mean, I have, in my lab, I keep a log of all the rejections and I think it would be quite impressive to see how many papers we get rejected in the course of a month, for example. And that's not unique. Everybody's papers get rejected all the time. There's two kinds of rejections. There's desk rejections, and then there's rejections after full peer review. Desk rejection happens when the editor, after looking at the paper, decides not to send your manuscript out for full peer review, but instead rejects it right off the bat. That is a so-called desk rejection. That means um, usually an editor or maybe a few of the editors have looked at your paper, determined it's not a fit for the journal or not exciting enough and therefore it is not sent out for peer review. When your manuscript has been desk rejected, um, basically it's not worth arguing with the editor whether the decision was correct or not. Um, the only course of action is just to look at another journal and submit it there. The second case is rejection after a full peer review, which means the editor had initially taken the decision that your manuscript should be sent to a bunch of reviewers, usually two or three. Then the reviewer results come back and the editor then takes the decision whether to allow a revision or to reject the paper. And this can happen at any point in that cycle of peer review. So if your paper is rejected after peer review, what do you do? There's basically two options. The most common one is you take that manuscript to another journal. When you do so though, I think it's very important that you take the reviewer comments from that first revision into account and you actually make the paper better based on these reviewer comments. I mean, you will not do a point by point response because you're starting from the beginning, basically, when you <clears throat> submit it to another journal. But I think it's um, highly unprofessional if you just take that same manuscript as it was originally submitted, ignore all the reviewer comments that you have received and send it to another journal. So don't do that. But it's that take those comments, which represent people's time and effort in the end, or at least the comments that make sense to you, and let them help you make the manuscript a better paper. And after you have addressed those comments from the reviewer, sort of internally, basically, then use that uh, improved manuscript and send it to the next journal. I think it's very important to keep in mind. The second course of action is if you feel very strongly that um, some of the reviewers or maybe the editor got a point wrong in assessing your paper, for example, they misunderstood um, a method that was applied or a point that you're trying to make that was deemed decisive for rejecting your paper. What you can do in some circumstances, and I don't recommend doing this all the time, but just uh, really under some um, circumstances where you have very good reason to argue, is you could send a rebuttal to the editor. There it's uh, quite important to use polite language, basically saying, I always start those with saying, I, I, I accept your decision to reject that paper because it is a well-considered decision based on those reviewer comments. However, I'd like to bring the following points to your attention and then you know, develop your argument why you think maybe some of the reviewers had misunderstood a point in your paper. Um, very often that doesn't um, lead anywhere, <laughs> so the paper is still rejected, but every once in a while this is successful. And as I said, in our lab we use this, this kind of rebuttal very, very rarely and only when we really feel that uh, something had been misunderstood. And of course, in the end, it's probably also partially our fault that it was misunderstood because some point in the paper was not made sufficiently clear. And then in your rebuttal, you also already outline how you could address this uh, source of the misunderstanding. Yeah, so basically, um, those are your two courses of action. Um, you accept the decision to reject after peer review, go to another journal, or if you feel very strongly that there was something wrong in that decision-making process because of a misunderstanding, then you can use the course of the rebuttal. In the end, two pieces of advice on how to deal with this reality of constant rejection. 
The first point is to just mentally prepare yourself for that rejection, especially when you send it to uh, journals with a, a high prestige. Uh, more likely than not, your, your paper will just be rejected. It's just the odds. What can you do to make this more palatable to yourself and also to your co-authors is what we do actually is we uh, make a list of journals that are desirable journals to send this particular manuscript to uh, in ranked order uh, before we even make the first submission. And I think that's important for two reasons. First of all, it's important for you mentally because you have basically already explicitly acknowledged in the form of a list that maybe your first or second or third choice of journal might not come to pass. And uh, therefore you have um, thought about what could be also desirable journals. And I think that's uh, just a psychologically good point on how to deal with this issue of rejection. The second point is more of a practical point is whenever you have a paper rejected, for example, as a desk rejection, and then go to the next journal, you know, you need to always inform all of your co-authors of this having happened. And then you need to basically get their okay to send it to another journal next. And it's much more efficient and much more streamlined if you basically have your co-authors before you submit the paper for the first time already approve that list. So it's a simple email. It's like, okay, we're going to send it first to um, science. And if it gets rejected from there, we'll send it to whatever other journals. And then you have all co-authors okay that decision, which means if it gets rejected from your desired journal one, two, three, you just immediately send it to the next journal and you don't lose any time and you don't have any discussions anymore with co-authors. And we find this is a really good way to, to do this. Yeah, so one more time, remember everybody's papers get rejected basically all the time. If your paper never gets rejected, then um, maybe you're not trying for the more desirable journals, which I think is also not good. So I think a, a certain number of rejections is, is just part of the normal course of action. And the important thing is just not to take it too much to heart. Of all the various things that can be rejected, including your job applications or your grant proposals, paper rejections are like the, <laughs> the least serious, even though it may not seem um, to you at the time when you, when you do get rejected, which of course is never nice. So good luck with your next manuscript. I hope it gets in.